All right, this video is going to go over the first part of your build a Tinkercad house um, assignment. So the learning target is today we'll begin a project to build a Tinkercad house so we're able to understand how engineers and architects use CAD programs to aid in their designs. Um, you'll, be, you'll show this by following the directions to build a very basic Tinkercad house. Um, so like I said, today we're going to begin the project and build a Tinkercad house, um, but this project will have three steps. So today we'll build the basic Tinkercad house, we'll follow along with a tutorial and create the basic house design. For the second part, we'll create a floor plan for our house, um, and we'll talk a little bit about how architects create floor plans. And then for the third part, you'll have a chance to make it your own, where you can either change your basic house, um, or you can create your own house from scratch. So again, computer-aided design are programs used in the creation, modification, analysis, and optimization of a design. Um, so they're used with when somebody wants to create a new, um, when somebody has an idea for a new invention, maybe they would design it on CAD. But you can also use it to design, people also use it to design houses um, and buildings and things like that. Um, they can use it to design the outside of the building and, and create plans to build it. They can also use it to um, show decorations on the inside of the building and, and use it for style and things like that. Again, they're very these programs are very useful because they're faster than drawing by hand, and they're also extremely precise. Um, again, engineers and architects use these programs to design buildings, houses, and other structures. Um, if you want to watch a house be designed in time lapse, you can check out the slideshow that is also linked here in your assignment. Um, so we'll start with step one, build a Tinkercad house. And like I said, in this step, you'll follow along with the tutorial to create a bank, basic Tinkercad house. So to get to the assignment, um, let's see, we'll go into Tinkercad and we're going to go to learn again. Um, this time we're going to click on projects and there's a whole bunch of projects down here. You can see CL projects if you want. Um, but the one we're going to do first is this build a Tinkercad house. So I'm going to click on that. Um, then here it's just going to kind of describe what we're going to do, and we get down to our three lessons. I'm going to put my cursor on that first one, build a Tinkercad house, and click on start. So basically then it's going to start my project. Um, over here on the side you will see directions um, for the project. Guys, I cannot stress enough how important it is to read directions. Um, so you definitely want to go through and make sure that you're reading these directions. I'm going to I am going to kind of walk through this, but I'm going to go, I'm not going to read every direction to you because you guys know how to read it, but please understand the first time I went through this, I read everything. So here, um, again, it's just going to kind of first, it just tells us to um, some of the basics of how we're going to build this house. Then we get into the real directions. So it's going to tell us to put a block box on the work plane and we're going to size it to 40 millimeters by 20 millimeters. You can do this two different ways. I could click on the yellow or on the little white boxes here, and I can just change these numbers. Or um, while my shape is selected, I can also have the values over here. So I'm going to use this. I'm going to click on the 20, change it to 40, hit enter. Um, for the width, I'm going to leave it at 20. And then it tells me over here that the height should be 10 millimeters. So I'm going to switch that 20 to a 10. So there's my box. And if I want all this to go away, I just hit the little arrow and it'll roll up. Okay. I'm going to click on and go to the next step. So now what it's going to do is it's going to have me um, actually make a copy of my box. So to make a copy of my box, I'm going to click on it, click on the duplicate button up here, and now I should have two of them so I can move one off just like that. Okay. Now if I read along here, it is going to tell me to use the black dots on the model to shrink the shape one millimeter in every direction. So with my copy, I wanna shrink it one millimeter in every direction. The easiest way to do this though, is again gonna to be to use this menu here. So for length, instead of 40, I'm just gonna turn it into a 39. For the width, instead of 20, I'm just gonna take one away and make it a 19. And then for the 10, um, on this one, it does tell you to make it taller so you can see it. So I am going to make it 50 just so it stands up, okay? Uh, and then we'll continue. Let's see. Okay. Um, what I'm and so for me it's easier to move the boxes apart, and then um, and then I'm going to align these boxes to put them back kind of lined up. Um, if I 
again, to align it, I'm just going to draw my box around it, click on my alignment tool. Um, I'm going to use this one in the middle here and the one in the middle on the side so it's lined up perfectly in the middle. Okay. I would hit next to go to my next direction. What it's going to have you to use, do next is take that bigger inner box and turn it into a hole. So I'm going to click on my big bo inner box. And once this menu comes up, I can click on the little gray circle here and it turns it into a hole. Okay. Um, my next step here is going to be to group these two boxes. When I group it, it sh the, the box that's a hole should end up hollowing out the other box and I should be left with my, the walls of my house. So again, I'm going to draw my box around it, click the grouping button, and there we go. There's my little house. Okay. If I continue to the next step, it's going to instruct me to make a doorway. So in order to make a doorway, we're going to use two shapes. We're going to use a cube, and then we're going to use this little, I don't even know what this is called. So I'm going to drag out my cube. Oop. Let's see, we'll drag it over here so we can see it. And I'm going to drag out my little topper. Okay. Um, now, it's going to tell me that I want to put the topper on the top of my cube. So if I look at the dimensions of my cube, it is 20 millimeters tall. So I'm going to raise, I want to raise my little roof piece up to 20 millimeters. And I know it's at 20 when this little number over here is at a 20. Okay, so there we go. Um, and then I'm going to align those so that it's right on top. And again, I think the easiest is just to use that alignment tool. I'm going to draw my box around it, click on the tool, align it in the middle on the here, in the middle here, and there we go. Um, the last step is we're going to group it so that it makes it one continuous shape, and we've got our door. Okay. Um, and again, I'm kind of trying to follow these directions a little bit, but believe me, I read these, and I'm just not going to read them to you. But they're all it's all here. All right. So now once I have this. My, I'm going to want to put the door into one of the sides of my house, but obviously the door is way too big. So the reason I put the door together while the shapes were big is it's much easier to see the pieces. But now I want to shrink it down. So I'm going to go to my front view so I can see how tall everything is. I'm going to click on my door. On my keyboard, if I hold the shift key down and then click on one of these white dots, I can shrink down the door and it, and it maintains its ratio. So the door stays, keeps its shape, and it just gets smaller. So I'm going to take it down where it's a little bit smaller or shorter than my, my house. And then I'm just going to move it into one of the sides like this. And again, I'm going to use the alignment tool just so I make sure that it's right in the middle. So I'm going to align it on this middle dot here, just like that. And then I actually want to click on my shape and turn it into a hole like that. Sorry, let's go back to the front view. Um, and then I'm going to group it. And when I group it, that door part disappears and it should hollow out a door in my house. So we'll group it. And there we've got our house. There we've got the door. Okay. So we'll go on to the next step. All right. And actually, we did all that. All right. Our last step is we're going to add a roof to this. So let's see. We are going to drag out a roof, just like that. Um, now, my, my house is 10 millimeters above the work plane, and the work plane is just basically like the floor that we're working on. So I'm going to raise this thing. I'm going to raise my roof 10 millimeters above plane, just like that. Um, and then I'm going to align it. Again, so I'll draw my box. I'm going to align it. I'm going to line them up in the middle this way. Um, but then instead of putting it in the middle, I'm going to align it just to one side of my house. So it's lined up like that. Um, now I can go to my top view, zoom out a little bit. I can click on the roof, oop, click off the alignment tool, click on my roof, and I should be able to just drag it big enough to cover my house. Kind of like that. Um, and actually, I could click on it. Let's see if it gives us dimensions there. Yeah, that one does not. Um, if I wanted one thing too about, about houses is that usually there's a little bit of an overhang. So like if it was 20 wide, maybe I want to make this 22. And if it was, let's see, 
And if my other dimension was, I like got to move this menu. Hang on. Let's move it over here again. OK. With this dimension, I'm going to make it 42. So again, it's a little bit bigger than my house, so it'll hang over. And then I'm just going to realign those. So go back to my alignment tool, line it in the middle, just like that. And let's go back to the front. And there's my basic Tinkercad house. You can see that I do have a little bit of an overhang there off the roof, just like a real house would. The very last step here is going to be to group it. So I'm going to put my box around it. I will group it. Now it's all one design. And then again, if I want to go back to the two different colors, I just click on my color, go to multicolor, and there we go. And make sure you click through all of your things and click done. And I'm done with this first step. Um, you can click continue to go on to your next step or we're done with this. So that's it.